Today is Throwback Thursday on Good Day Oregon with Joe V looking back on another of his favorite stories from the past. And with Easter Sunday this weekend, he's here now to tell us about a local church and its unique history that goes back more than 160 years. Hi guys, yeah, you know folks, uh, Sunday is obviously going to be a challenging day for many people as churches will be closed throughout Oregon on Easter. Now this story, which we aired last August, goes back to a time when you also couldn't attend Sunday service in Oregon, but that's because there were no churches. So first came a log cabin, then a brickwork of beauty that still stands in a most unlikely place. It's a sight you might not expect in the middle of cowboy country. A would-be cathedral and the cradle of Oregon's Catholic Church. What do outsiders say to you? They're amazed. And they think it's a beautiful church, and they're amazed at the size of church built in the middle of the wilderness. Monsignor Gregory Moyes is an Oregon native who has spent the last 10 years as pastor of St. Paul Roman Catholic Church. I remember the first time when I was assigned to take over St. Paul. I knew all the history of the church, history of the parish and everything. Never been here, had no idea where it was. To understand how this church came to be, you have to visit the roots of St. Paul more than 180 years ago, when this area was first settled by French Canadian fur traders turned farmers. They were Catholics with no place to pray, so they built one. This is the first church in Oregon. It looked like yes. this. Yes, it was a log church, not very big. Accommodate maybe about 60, 70 people. The church was built in 1836, but they couldn't officially celebrate mass because there were no priests. Two years later, the Bishop of Quebec finally sent a pair of priests to St. Paul, including one man whose name would become synonymous with Northwest Catholics. And Father Francis uh, Norbert uh, Blanchet, or Blanchet here in Oregon. He officiated the first mass in 1839 and even slept in the old log church until it eventually burned down. So Blanchet, who is now a territorial bishop, set out to build something bigger. They killed all the bricks right here on the land because it's kind of clay. Uh, they built it as a cathedral because he was a bishop and the bishop always has uh, the seat of, of the bishop there. Mm -hmm. So they built this big thing here. Finished in 1846. Then that same year, something unexpected happened. On a trip to Rome, Bishop Blanchet was surprisingly appointed an archbishop. Now, you have to realize, at that time, only one U.S. city had an archdiocese. That was Baltimore. Now, Oregon, which wasn't even a state yet, had an archdiocese ahead of cities like Boston, Philadelphia, and New York. Like, what modern states were part of this archdiocese? Uh, at the time, it would have been what's now Washington State. Idaho, Montana, part of Wyoming, and of course, Oregon. To administer his new territory, Blanchet had to leave St. Paul and move to Oregon City. With a bishop no longer present, this planned cathedral was now simply a church, a big, ornate church in the middle of a small rural area that 170 years later is still pretty small and still pretty rural. The pews are probably about 140 years old or new. <laughs> I knew, 140 years old. And while St. Paul was once envisioned as the headquarters of Pacific Northwest Catholic life, today its aims are smaller, but no less important. The church is home to about 300 local parishioners, and it's a registered historic landmark with a unique claim. They say it's the oldest brick building in Oregon, but I haven't gone around to check other brick buildings. So while the rest of the world may change around it, the old church continues to stand as a testament to faith and just good old-fashioned craftsmanship a tradition that should continue for generations to come with proper care and maybe a few prayers. It I takes mean, care of itself. <laughs> I don't. Well, you've got help. <laughs> yeah, I've got help. Yeah, that's true. It's done real well. And uh, even though churches, including St. Paul, will not be open this weekend, the Archdiocese of Portland is live streaming uh, Mass throughout Easter weekend. Not only uh, today, actually, is Holy Thursday, Good Friday on Friday, and then, of course, Easter Mass on Sunday. We'll have a link to all of that at kptv.com. And, guys, as I was telling you earlier, this isn't the first time they've actually had to shut down. In 1993, there was a big earthquake, damaged the church, but they repaired it. They kept the original brick facade. They reopened it, and they'll reopen it again soon. It's such a beautiful centerpiece of St. Paul. If you ever go through that area, be yeah. sure to stop and take a look because it's just a stunning piece it, of work. It really is. It's All pretty right. incredible. Joe, thanks for bringing that back to us.